welcome. And welcome to you. Thank you for coming out on a rainy Good Friday evening as we just focus our thoughts this weekend on the magnificent gift that Jesus Christ gave to us, giving us hope and assurance. And that's what we're talking about tonight. But in order to do that, he was forsaken. And the beautiful music that you're going to hear tonight is going to walk us through that story. And then I'll end up with a, a one-hour sermon. No. <laughs> a five-minute homily, okay, just to, to wrap up some thoughts. But thank you for sharing the time with us tonight. Let's just open with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the Sabbath hours that have come. We thank you for this weekend that causes us to just stop and think. But Lord, help us to, to not just think, but help us to envision what took place there at Calvary so long ago. Uh, we just pray that you'd help us to make it personal and to draw it in. But thank you for the beautiful music that we're going to hear and the fellowship that we're going to share together this evening. We ask your blessing and your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, thank you again so much, each one of you, for all the time you've put into this. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Hosanna! Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest. Jesus the prophet, hailed in joy and triumph.
After his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. And he spoke to them, saying, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. When the chief priests and teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and heard the little children praising him in the temple with shouts of, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what they're saying, they demanded. Jesus replied, Yes, have you never read from the lips of children you have ordained praise? Jesus, the teacher object of purest praise. next morning, Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him once again asking, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love your Lord, your God, with all your heart 
and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. Jesus the priest, showing how to love the Father. After leaving the temple, Jesus was in Bethany, at the home of a man known as Simon the leper. While there, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on him as he reclined at the table. When the disciples saw, that they were out, saw this, they were outraged and asked, why this waste? This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will never always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Jesus, the beloved, anointed, blessed, prepared. With her jar of alabaster, Mary came to see the Lord. Broken spilled it on the master, down onto the floor it poured. Some who sat there at the table 
questioned why she acted so. Why would Jesus let a sinner such a wasteful action show? But the Savior knew the reason for the kindness Mary showed, as he soon would meet the season when his prayer. forsaken of God would soon take his The time of the Feast of Passover had come, and Jesus was in an upper room with the twelve disciples celebrating together. Jesus reclined at the table, saying, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat my body that will be broken for you. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which will be poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Not understanding the significance of all that was happening, a dispute arose among the disciples as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, but you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the least, and the one who rules like one who serves. Who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up and removed his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. He poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was around him. When Peter tried to prevent this master from washing his feet, 
Jesus rebuked him gently. Do you not realize what I am doing now? But later you will understand. Unless I wash you, you will have no part with me. Jesus, the servant, remembered, revered. Forsaken. daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Christ, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, If I tell you, you will not believe me, and if I ask you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. As they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man of subverting our nation. He claims to be Christ, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? You are right in saying that I am. Pilate called together the chief priests and the rulers and said to them, You have brought me this man who is inciting rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. With one voice they cried out, Away with this man! Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appeared before them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! With loud shouts they demanded he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand and surrender Jesus to their will. Triumph turned to tragedy. Praise to persecution. Blessing to betrayal. Remembrance to rejection. The servant becomes the sacrifice. 
Jesus, the Son of God, forsaken. Forsaken. Forsaken.
After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled the stone from the tomb. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away to tell the disciples, afraid yet filled with great joy. Tragedy turns to triumph. Weeping turns to joy. Jesus, the Savior, once forsaken, is alive forevermore. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was magnificent. When you cried out, crucify him, 
I got chills. Three times you said it. Three times we denied our Lord just like Peter. And, but that wasn't the end. We've been forgiven and we have so much to be thankful for. So we're, we're going to save our final applause for at the end, but thank you. I wish I could have heard it myself. What did it sound like? Was it a cry of total despair and anguish? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But I think mixed in with that cry of pain, don't forget the pain. Jesus was real. He was human. He'd been beaten so severely. He was exhausted. He was dying. But he called out. But did you notice how the program ended? It didn't, it didn't end at the cross. Amen. It didn't end at the cross. There was something far greater coming that made the cross worthwhile even for Jesus. He said, this is why I came. And I, and I believe that when he called out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was calling out to the people, don't forget hymn number 22. Don't forget Psalm 22. We're going we're gonna to revisit that in, in a couple of weeks. We're going to unpack that a little bit more. What does it mean to be forsaken? It means to be abandoned, to be deserted, to turn away from, to reject. What really happened there? Philippians 2, beginning with verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who even though he was in very nature God, even though he was God in his fullness, he didn't consider that fullness something that he had to hang on to. And so he emptied himself. He emptied himself. He made himself nothing and took upon him the very nature of a servant. And being made in our likeness, and found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Jesus decided to do that. He gave himself up. The Romans didn't kill him. The Jews didn't kill him. He gave himself up. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Catch this. God made him, God made Jesus, who had no sin, be sin for us. It doesn't say he made him carry the weight of our sin. It says it made him be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus was forsaken. Luther struggled with this. For hours and hours and hours, Luther struggled with this, and he kept calling out, how can God forsake God? It's because Jesus gave up being God and died because he had become sin. And God had to turn his back on sin. I, I tell you this, and I can't fully comprehend it. 
He had become sin. It was necessary because of our sin, our rejection, our betrayal, our forsaking of him. When Jesus died on the cross, it was the weight of that sin that broke his heart and caused his death. And when he died, when Jesus fully, completely died, sin died with him. Our sin, your sin, my sin, died with him if we choose to be in Christ and invite his spirit to dwell in us. That's the only thing we have to do, folks, is choose. Choose to believe that he is who he said he was, that he did what the Bible tells us he did, and that that was not the end, because he's alive. He has risen. Romans 8, 10, and 11, to close. If Christ is in you, okay, how does that happen? You simply choose to invite him in. Don't worry about whether it feels like it or not. Don't trust your feelings. Trust his promises. He came to save the world, not to condemn the world. He wants you in. He's in the business of getting you in, not finding an excuse to keep you out. So all you have to do is choose and invite him. If Christ is in you, literally, then even though your body is subject to death, unfortunately, until Jesus comes, we're going to die. Even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness, his righteousness that he's given to you. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. It's that simple. And it's that beautiful as they sang and played it for us, the power of music to portray that story again, the, the crescendo at the end. He's risen. He's alive, folks. Every day is resurrection day to me, not just Sunday. So I invite you to keep it as simple as that. But don't forsake him. Accept him. And as you do, trust him. Again, not by your feelings, but by his promises. Trust him that he has given you eternal life now today. So come tomorrow morning and hear the rest of the story about when the Spice Girls met the Rolling Stones. Pray with me. Father God, thank you. Thank you for this moving, powerful, stimulating portrayal in music of the week and the events leading up to the betrayal, the trial the crucifixion, the death, oh, but the resurrection. Amen. Lord, thank you for the music. Thank you for the work that went into this. But Lord, help us not just to take home the memories of powerful, beautiful music, but to take home the promise, the reality of Christ, the risen Christ through his spirit living in us. Lord, help it to make a difference in our lives and help us, like Mary and the others who have seen the risen Lord, help us to go and tell others the good news. So, Lord, thank you for the privilege of being here tonight. Go with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Victoria, orchestra, choir,
There are not enough words to thank you for the time you put into this. What a pity that you only sing it once. So much work, but thank you. You've been a great blessing to all of us tonight. Can we give them a warm thank you? Thank you. And I see that something is missing. I believe I understand from all the concerts I've been to in the past that a bouquet of flowers is given to the conductor, and I don't see any. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to have flowers delivered to your home this week, okay? because it's a huge responsibility to get this many people behave. <laughs> we are going to have an offering to support the musical productions and ministry of the church. There will be ushers at the door to receive your offering. No? You're going to pick it up here? Thank you. I love to be corrected by someone other than my wife. So, at this time, we're going to receive our offering to support the music ministry of the Carmichael Church. Thank you. So don't go away, we'll have another prayer after this.
And now may the risen Lord bless you. May the risen Lord keep you. May the risen Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may the risen Lord give you peace that only he can give. God bless you. Thank you for coming.